today I'm going to teach you guys how you can create this dope floating 3D chrome object effect in After Effects using Element 3D. Let's go. So the first thing you're going to do is obviously have your clip loaded up and you're going to come over here to your tracker panel and hit track camera. Now it's very important that you have a very nice smooth shot with like good background view so that the After Effects camera can do a great job of tracking it. Tracking it is everything with this effect so make sure you have a good track. Once you have your track done you're going to get these little 3D flowers I like to call them and if you scroll along in your timeline you should be able to see that they're all perfectly tracked to the building. And by the way if you don't get these 3D flowers and you run into a couple of errors that either say frame rate composition mismatch or match composition size to the original size then it's very simple all after effects means by those errors is that you have to make sure that your clip settings are the exact same settings of your composition settings and how you can check this is you can go to your composition you can go ahead and click composition settings and make sure that your width and height are the exact same as your clip my clip right here is 1080 by 1920 and then also the frame rate is 29.97 so basically 30 frames per second and my clip is also 30 frames per second so if you have a clip that's like 60 frames per second and you're trying to track it in a 30 frame per second composition the tracker is not going to work or if you have a different size the tracker is also not going to work so just make sure all your settings are correct and the exact same and then just hit ok and you should be good with the 3d flower now let's go ahead and create a camera by clicking the create camera button and boom we have a 3d camera layer let's go ahead to layer we're going to hit new and then we're going to create a new solid you can call this 3d fx it doesn't matter what color it is because it's all going to be invisible in just a bit now it's time for element 3d now you can go ahead and get element 3d from the videocopilot.net website yes it's about 200 bucks but personally i see it as a personal investment if you're going to buy something that's going to allow you to keep making more money let's say you keep getting clients or you keep doing music videos and keep making money off that i see it as a worthwhile investment for those of you who pirate it do it at your own risk it's kind of dangerous but however you get it that's however you get it but now let's go ahead and get back into after effects go to your effects and i'm going to search for the element plugin now i'm going to drag this element plugin to my solid 3d fx layer and boom the color is gone now let's go ahead and before we hit scene setup which is the magic button where we're gonna do all our 3d effects let's go ahead and go to our custom layers hit the drop down there and then hit the drop down on custom texture maps now for layer one select none and change it to the video clip that you have so this is this pharrell clip that we have and basically this is going to allow us to get proper lighting when we do all of our 3d effects later on now before we go ahead and hit scene setup one more time is make sure you you go ahead and get your 3d objects i like to go to cgtrader.com there's a bunch of 3d objects that you can get here i'm going to be creating this like louis vuitton pattern you can go ahead and search their objects they have free and paid objects so you can go ahead and hit the free tab and you can see we have a bunch of cool 3d like louis vuitton objects right here which i downloaded a few and once you have your effects downloaded now it's time to go back into after effects and hit scene setup because now we're going to get to the actual fun animation part now we are inside of element 3d if you have never been on element 3d before don't don't worry it's a very very simple setup now the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna click import and you're just gonna go ahead and select your object start with one and we're gonna do everything later click import 3d object and then just check load material and hit ok now we have our object loaded into element right here it's looking pretty nice and 3d ish now let's go ahead and hit the drop down right here on the scene panel this is basically like your layers in after effects we're gonna hit this circle icon which is basically this the material and we're gonna go ahead and click this reflectivity icon right here and just basically bump up that intensity to like a hundred percent now we have like a metallic looking reflective like Louis Vuitton star right here and now to get the perfect proper lighting is go to the little textures icon go to environment click none set and then hit the drop down on load texture and click whatever clip you have loaded up and because that is what we did when we selected the texture layers just a few minutes ago hit okay and now you can see the lighting is perfectly adjusted to our video clip it looks pretty cool if you ask me now let's go ahead hit okay and you should see your star appear boom there we go we're gonna go ahead and start with just one and then we're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of our objects as well because the goal and idea is to have multiple like floating objects so you can do this with like floating rocks floating leaves twigs or like city objects whatever you want to have floating in your scene you can do it any object doesn't matter i'm just making a chrome metallic one which by the way i do want to shout out if you're interested in like saving yourself the time of not having to do all this because yes this is a lot of work we actually have a 3d 
Chrome floating objects pack at our website, 11percent.net. It comes with like 20 plus assets of overlays. You can just key out the green and boom, you have some 3D Chrome floating objects. They're actually really dope. We also have iridescent objects in there as well. And they're just like floating and spinning. And this is a really easy way to add some sick effects and it allows you to save yourself some time. And no, you actually don't even need Element 3D. They're just straight up MP4 files. You just drag them onto your video. Don't need to load anything. Saves the rendering, saves time. It's just overall great pack. So if you want to check that out, it's available at 11percent.net. With that, let's get back to the tutorial. So now that we have our flower like floating in the sky right here in the background, what we're going to do is we are going to duplicate it. I'm going to hit the drop down on group one, and then I'm going to hit the drop down on our particle look. Then I'm going to hit the drop down on multi object. I'm going to click enable multi object. And now we have all of our fun settings. So the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and set the amount of particles that you want to have. Like we have one flower right now. So let's say I want like 15 flowers like floating around this scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna make sonic sure I hit the drop down on particle replicator. I'm so sorry. There's going to be a lot of drop downs. And for the particle count right here, you're just going to increase this to whatever you want. Let's do, let's do 12. Let's see how that works. And now it looks like everything stays the same, but that's because there are now 12 flowers exactly in the same position. So we need to separate them. Good thing. There's actually a scatter button. So we can go ahead and scroll down to our multi object and we can basically increase the scatter. So there's actually a scatter multi option and this will just like randomly scatter stuff, but you can also scatter stuff on the X coordinate on the Y coordinate and also the Z coordinate, which you can't see because it's coming at you. But I'm just going to do the multi scatter because it just saves me a lot of time and places things in cool random areas. And then one other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and increase the size a little bit, which I can also adjust right under this multi object drop down. There's a size control and boom, there you go. Just randomly adjust size. I want them a little bit more spaced apart on the Z axis. So good thing I can displace that the scatter on the Z and boom, there you go. Now we have some cool stars looking like they're on the Z axis. It looks actually pretty cool. Now, if you play this out, you can see, boom, we have these floating 3D stars. So one cool trick I do want to show you guys is with this After Effects camera. So if you hit the drop down on the 3D camera and you hit the camera options, you can actually adjust the depth of field. And now this is a really cool effect. I usually like to create this effect manually, but this actually saves you a lot of time. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and click this depth of field right here, and you're going to change it from off to on. And now you're going to see we have some like blur happening right here with the objects that are closer to the camera. And that is because the After Effects camera is adjusting for the actual depth of field. So you can see the focus right here is kind of on our subject right here. So it's trying to put the stars that are closest to them in focus and the stars that are not out of focus. And that's just a really cool, easy way to create a more like sense of realism with our effect. And we can actually increase the blur level if we wanted. So if we want those even more blurry, we can do that and we can adjust the focus distance. So if I decrease the focus distance right here, I'm going to zoom in just so you can see it better. I'm going to go ahead and decrease this focus distance. And now it's going to place the stars that are closer to our subject, like more in focus. And then the stars that are not out of focus, that looks like it's pretty good in focus. And now everything that's in front of them is out of focus. It just makes things feel a lot more real. Seriously, like these stars right here, out of focus, these stars right there in focus, really cool effect. And now if you play that out, boom, we have this like actual realistic looking star effect. Okay. So now let's go ahead and add some animation to this effect. Now pay attention to this part very closely because I ain't going over this twice. Go to the very, very beginning of your clip. This is very important. Go to the very beginning of your clip under the multi object right here. There's going to be a control that says rotation, random multi click a keyframe on it right there. And I want you to bump it up just to a random value. And what this is going to do is going to rotate all your objects into like random orientation. So they all look a little bit more natural. Now what we're going to do is I'm also going to scroll up over here to the particle position right here. And I'm going to click a keyframe right there at the very beginning. Now I'm going to create an animation. So it looks like all these stars are floating to the top and rotating. Now, once you have your keyframes all set at the beginning, it's time to go to the very end of your clip right now and go to the very end last frame. I'm just going to go ahead, decrease that Y position so that all the stars like kind of start animating upward. And then I'm also going to scroll down over here to the rotation, random multi and increase that as well. So that the stars rotate a little bit more into another random direction. And now you can see if we play this out, it looks like all these stars are floating to the top. So there we go. We have our first layer of stars. Now this effect is very simple. You just go ahead and duplicate and repeat all the processes for your next object. So we're going to create a Louis Vuitton like logo, but the really important thing is you have to make sure it's in the second group. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. And then all the other settings that we did are literally just the same as the first layer. So you don't have to like repeat. It's just, you just rewatch that part. So first go to your scene setup right here, go back to your scene setup inside of element. And we are going to go ahead, hit the drop down on the group folder 
folder. So we close that and we're going to create a new folder. So I'm going to create a new group folder. Make sure it's not inside old group folder. Just drag it outward. So now we have two group folders. If you want, you could rename it for better organization. So this first one, I'm going to rename like LV flower. Hit OK. And then now for the second group, I'm going to rename this and call this LV logo. Now watch this. Very, very important. Make sure that the LV logo or your second group is set to number two, like a second group. It's entirely different group. So now this is going to be an entirely different composition because our flower is not there. So if we click on our flower group, it's there and our logo, it's not there. So it's a totally different scene. Now go ahead and click import and import your new asset. I'm going to use this logo right here. Click load material, hit OK. Now, once you have your second logo loaded up, just go ahead and it's very simple because we did all the work from last time. You actually should have a preset of your old material, which you can just go ahead and drag onto your new object and boom, there you go. Proper lighting applied and reflectivity as well. Go ahead and hit OK. You should now see your second LV look. Yep, there it is right there. I found it it's nice and hidden right there. Once you have your second logo, you just go ahead and seriously just repeat the process of all the last steps. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed this part up because it's the exact same as group one and just make the settings a little bit different so you have some different rotation and animation to it. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up. And boom, there you go. Once you have your second set of objects loaded in, we have this nice, super dope, like floating 3D chrome object effect look. And one last final touch is if you just want to make sure your effect even comes off as a little bit more real is just go ahead and rotoscope your subjects out. Now, rotoscoping is very, very simple. If you don't know how to do it, we actually have this tutorial right here, but I'm just going to really quickly show you how I do it in After Effects. Go ahead and close all these drop downs. Go ahead and click on your main clip layer, hit Command D to duplicate it. And we're going to rename this top layer to roto layer so roto like that and now let's go ahead and double click this top layer and just go ahead and grab your roto brush tool in the top left hand corner by clicking this little brush tool and just color over your subject and it will create a purple mask and you can use option or alt to delete any areas that you don't like if you get this frame rate mismatch error very very simple fix just make sure your composition setting is set to the exact frame rate of your clip so this clip right here is actually 60 frames per second but the composition setting is 30 frames per second. So kind of a little mismatch error here, but if you want, you can just go ahead and keep dragging and it should adjust it. But if you run into it, the error and it's still messing it up, then just go ahead and make sure the composition frame rate is the exact same. Drag along the timeline to adjust your roto brush segment. And I'm just gonna speed this portion up. And boom, there you go. Once you have all your rotoscoping done, just click this freeze icon. So it just locks all your rotoscoping in place. Now go back to your main composition right here by clicking the composition original button in the top left hand corner and boom, just like that. Now we have a rotoscope layer, drag your rotoscope layer above your 3D effects. And now your people are in front of your objects and it looks just a lot more realistic and cool. Now, obviously, if you want to create some more realism for this effect, you can create a second duplicate layer of your 3D effects. So what I would do is I would hit command D on this 3D effects, put one in front of my rotoscope layer, and then I'm going to go to my scene setup. Let's go ahead and turn off this back layer so I'm gonna turn off group one hit OK and then for my original element 3d layer I'm gonna click scene setup and I'm going to turn off our top one so I'm gonna turn off group two and hit OK and that way all of our group two objects are in front of our subject and all of our flowers are behind our subject so that creates just a little bit more realism to the effect looks just a little bit cooler and more unique but with that guys mess around with this effect make it your own don't copy these settings down to the exact nitty-gritty details I hope you found some help from this video leave a comment down below what tutorial you'd like to see from us next and here's the final result